Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers, listeners all over the world, wherever you may be, that you are watching and fellowshipping with us through the Daily Fountain, reading note of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. It is a wonderful privilege for us to be together. Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, I pray for all the viewers, all the listeners all over the globe who are sharing with us this joy of sharing from your word through the daily fountain. I pray that you will grant us open heavens so that such things as are important for us to learn through this study, you will grant unto us in fullness. In Jesus' glorious name we pray. Amen. My viewers and my people, my brethren all over the place who are watching us today, Today we are discussing the topic, today, Thursday, February 18, 2021, we are discussing the topic that says the heart and treasures. And our text is Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Can we read the text together? Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and rusts destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. The topic again is hearts, the heart and treasures. The heart of a man is the center of the activities of the life of that man. That is why Jesus talk much about the hearts. In short, if you follow the teachings of our master Jesus Christ when he was having problems with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he was trying to redirect them because these were hypocrites. If you saw what have been, if you have been following the Daily Fountain for some days now, you discover that this Matthew chapter 6, he was discussing ex exhaustively the matter where attention needs to be focused. And here again, you, he's, he's giving us a light on the issue of trying to make sure that our heart is where it's supposed to be. And he's talking about earthly treasures. Earthly treasures. And Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on the earth. And at the end of that, he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. What is the connection between the heart and treasure? Jesus said that wherever your treasure is, whatever you treasure, that is where your heart focuses upon. Every day, whatever that is important to you, that is what your heart thinks about. That's what you meditate upon. As you wake up in the morning to go out, your heart is on something. You go about activities that your heart has already designed. And so, Jesus is teaching us that a lot of things which people are experiencing in life that have brought about, you know, sudden deaths and even people committing suicide 
is because of the matter of where their treasure is. And Jesus is saying in this passage of the scripture we are reading today that so many people build up their treasures on things that can be destroyed. All of us who I'm sure as, as many of us as have been and are, are sharing this meeting and are following together, you can bear witness that so many people have killed themselves because either one calamity or the other happened. You know, remember certain markets got burned by fire and I'm, I'm a witness of a particular market where all his, his uh, market uh, products are got burned and he just had the news that that place was gulfed by fire. And the man just said, ooh, ooh, ooh. and before you know the man fell down and died. This is a life truth. And this tells us exactly, gives us understanding of what the master Jesus is talking about. He said, do not lay off for yourselves treasures on the earth. Where? What is it that happens on the earth? He said, there are moths, there are rusts, that destroy these treasures. They are not completely within your power. You know, I was ministering to a young man the other day. He was telling me that he is getting frustrated because he had labored and gotten some money as he was just traveling for a, a business trip. Robbers met him on the road and took the whole money. And he was devastated. So, there are many things that happen. Fire can burn. Robbers can take off. We are witnessing the country where bandits and those we call Boko Haram and the rest of them, they can just get structures. In a second, the whole thing is gulfed by fire. Big cathedrals, big church buildings that Hundreds of billions are spent on, have been destroyed in a twinkling of an eye. And you can imagine what this means. That is to say, if somebody's heart is this thing and this thing is burnt like that, the person is gone. The person is gone. So, so many people do investment on so many things. You know, and when this thing just ends up, it means that the heart of the man that is attached to that thing will suffer a heart attack. Many have had heart attack suddenly like that. You know. And so, what is it that Jesus is teaching in this place? He says, there is a place you can lay up your treasure. And let me read that place again in verse 20, he said, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven. Where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Does he mean that we cannot make effort to get wealth in this life? No. He's talking about the hearts. Where the attention is. He says, Whatever you are doing, there is an investment that is eternal. And this investment that is eternal is investment in the kingdom business. You remember, if you have been following our discussion in the Daily Fountain, the discussion on the 16th, when he was giving the model of the Lord's Prayer, he said, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom. So that he prayer. There is emphasis in the kingdom. God is interested in the kingdom business. And you know, in Matthew, this same Matthew, when if you read down, if you go down to chapter th verse 33, you begin to say, Look, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see, when you do this, all other things will be added. So, there is something that is a priority. You know, in that place, if you read, from, if you read the same chapter we are reading from verse 25 down, you see that God was talking about that your heavenly father knows that you need bread. 
you need shelter. You need clothing so that cold will not kill you. You need bread so that hunger will not kill you. You need shelter. He says, your heavenly father knows you need these things. And he gives you, in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he says, I am the one that giveth to you power to get wealth. Therefore, let wealth not take your heart away from me. I know you need this wealth. To build cathedrals is not a bad thing. To build big structures is not a bad thing. Because we need them. This place we are using now for this uh, discussion is money that brought it about. So it's not saying you don't need these things. But it's saying let there be a focus. Let your heart be focused somewhere. It says there is something first. And that thing that is first is the kingdom. So, you know, there are so many people like this. They can be in the church. They can, you know, if you tell them about there is, there is a need in the church to do one thing or the other, to one project or the other, they can give pittance. They can give whatever and go their way. And they are big church members. Where they are putting their whole investment is on structure somewhere that can project their name. But they don't have anything they give. Even ordinary tithe, which the Bible prescribes as law, they, if you check records of so many people that you know that are very wealthy, some of them, many of them don't give anything in the church. And this church is the kingdom of God, is the kingdom business of God. It's an investment of the Almighty God that God can never forget anybody who invests in the kingdom. Never. That's why Jesus said, there is something first. But when you leave this at its first, which is the kingdom business, and you begin to pursue all other things, you see, you will continue to pursue and pursue, and it will be vanity. You will never arrive. That is why you find so many people, they, they are frustrated. They are frustrated in life because they are pursuing shadow. Solomon, in his experience, he wanted to get well. He said, he got this thing, he got that, he got that. Whatever his hand wanted, he got it. But at the end of the day, say vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. You cannot have satisfaction from these things. Yes, they are good. They can give us comfort here and there. But real satisfaction comes from seeking the kingdom of the Almighty God. When you seek the kingdom of God first, Every other thing will take place, will fall into their normal shape. And you will see joy, you will see satisfaction that comes from above, which money cannot give. That's why some people have said, you know, money can buy you bed, but it cannot buy you sleep. There are so many people, even though they have security people all around them here and there, they cannot sleep in their bed. Any problem like this, they are, they are, they are tensed up. So many people have died of heart attack, high blood pressure, because of one great loss or the other. The Lord Jesus is saying, let us make efforts. Let us lay our treasures in heaven. It is when we are investing in kingdom business that we are laying treasures in heaven. When we are putting our resources to expand the kingdom of God amongst men, to build men, build men for the kingdom, that is when we are investing in kingdom business. That's when we are laying our treasures in heaven. There are so many people in our churches that we need to build. There are so many individuals who are followers of Christ, but they don't even have enough. When we invest our treasures in these people for the sake of the kingdom, we are, in, we are putting our treasures in heaven. And this attracts the blessings of God. You, it attracts the peace of God. So that whatever resources God in his grace has provided for you, you will discover that it will give you joy, it will give you satisfaction. Because there are so many people that all over the place will say, I thank God because of this person. He has made me to follow the kingdom. And God of heaven, who says, seek you first, the kingdom, will never forget you. Brethren, let us look at this matter. Today, so many people are running helter-skelter, investing here and there. Good. But let us know there is something that is first. Jesus said, lay your treasure. As long as your heart is in anything that is not the kingdom of God, <laughs> ah, it is vanity. It is vanity. And before you know it, those things you have put your heart, once they, once they get destroyed, you are finished. You are finished. Many people have had this experience. 
but the Lord is, is instructing us. Let us look at the scripture. Let us follow instructions of the master Jesus so that it shall go well with us. Let us begin to learn to invest in the kingdom, especially in this present time. We are seeing the end of time coming. The need to expand the kingdom of God is higher than ever before. Let people whom the Lord has given resources, let them invest in this kingdom business and the Lord will bless you mightily. As you go about this thing, I assure you that the Lord God Almighty for whom you are investing in your business will bless you mightily and you see that you will be a distributor of God's words. Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity again to share from your word. Help us, Heavenly Father, to learn to lay our treasures in heaven so that our heart shall not suffer attack when the, resource, when the wealth of this life is destroyed even by the, by the word of God. Help us that we may invest properly in the kingdom first and all of that things shall follow. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Timber Lockwood Preservative surpasses all preventive measures designed to permanently prevent the damage and quality reduction of wood and wood-based materials by termites, fungi, bacteria, and other boring insects. Use Timber Lock Premium Wood Preservative to prevent, correct, and defend wood and wood materials against deformities caused by termites and other insects in the later days. Timberlock is designed to solve wood preservation challenges with a standard you can trust. Timberlock Wood Preservative kills termites instantly. Timberlock Wood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.